the director of officials for the Southeastern Conference, Steve Shaw. Hope you're doing well. It's good to see you back at SEC Media Days. It's great to be here. Uh, you know, it's an amazing event, uh, but it's always uh, fun to be a part of it. No doubt. And I know this is, for us, as the fans, it's the unofficial start. It gets your pulse going, gets your blood pressure going. It, it's that sign that college football is getting a little bit closer, I believe. We are 53 days away uh, from SEC football. Yeah, and, uh, you know, for us as officials, uh, next week is really our big kickoff because uh, we bring all our officials into Birmingham three days here. We'll work on mechanics. We'll rule study. Uh, we'll actually test them on that. Uh, they'll, they'll get their physical fitness check. Uh, we run a mile and a half in the lovely Birmingham heat. And, uh, and then really work, you know, in preparation for the season. So uh, our kind of unofficial kickoff is next week. But, you know, it's, it's become a year-round thing. Our, our guys don't take the winter off anymore. Uh, you know, they're working every week with a quiz. We had two spring clinics. We had a referee leadership meeting. We had a national instant replay conference. And, and like I said, our quiz every week. So our guys are fully engaged even in the off season, And uh, they're ready to get it going. You know, do you guys feel the pressure? Uh, because the parity in this league, because the, uh, we're so equal when you look at the Southeastern Conference, especially on the western side, the east is coming. I think they'll be there at some point, uh, continue to get stronger. But do you guys feel that pressure because where it was maybe one play didn't mean as much, now one play, you miss one play, and you may cost not only a team for competing, competing in the college football championships, but a chance to go to Atlanta. There's a lot riding on that one play. Do you guys feel that pressure and that heat? Well, you know, you can't focus on that pressure. I mean, you've got to go do your job, play by play for the game. And uh, but, but we recognize it. I mean, the game has changed from that perspective. Not only, you know, the competitive, I mean, our conference is uh, so competitive, and it has been for a while, you know. Uh, even in the East, I mean, there, it, it, you know, you, you reference that, but the, these games, these coaches, you know, they want to win, and, and so it's very intense environments, uh, great stadiums to work in. So, you know, that's been their elite athletes in our conference. So, you know, what we have to do is not focus on the pressure, but just doing your job play by play in this thing. And, and I think our guys have done that. And, uh, you know, the, the last thing you want to do is saying, uh oh, this next play is going to determine who goes to whatever bowl or the championship game. Uh, you just got to work it. But I will say this, you know, the the social media, the blog, I mean, everything, I mean, the instant now everything has really changed. And, and we just try to block all that out and, and go work our football games. We have this conversation a lot. Depends on, you know, if we talk to a guy like Mickey Andrews, 25-year veteran of, of defensive side of the football. But if we talk to a Joe Namath or a, a icon on the offensive side of the football, we always ask this question. I'm curious to get your perspective. Currently in college football, do you think the rules favor one side of the ball? Do you think we're not as focused on the defensive side of the football? Because you talk to those guys, they, they feel that maybe the rules do favor the offensive side of the football. From your standpoint, point. Well, so the rules are evolving, and, and so I'm not hedging against that, but, um, I, you know, our role is to officiate the rules as they come out. One thing I will tell you um, is, and I think this is a very, very good change, um, this year uh, they're creating what's being called a competition committee. So there will still be a rules committee, but a competition committee, and, and the goal of this competition committee is get people that know the game, you know, understand the game, have long linkage to the game, and really have a strategic long-term focus not as you say well my defense does this or my offense does this but really look at what's good for the game uh, around player safety technology you know how we play it how we interact uh, with the student athletes and so I, I think this is very good and good timing that we have this competition committee being formed and theirs will be a strategic look and they'll give feedback into the rules committee so the competition committee won't get knee deep and you know changing a block and below the waist you know written rule but strategically what do we need to do around pace what do we need to do around offense versus defensive balance and uh, you know I, it's hard to comment on that because you know I think our world is more offensive in nature. They love to see points. And, 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 you know, from an officiating, we can't get caught up in all that. We just got to say, all right, here's our rules. Here's what we work with. And, and I'll use pace of play as an example. I, I think, you know, there's no change this year in pace of play. The last couple of years, our officials have gotten much, much better in dealing with pace of play. The eighth official that we're going to add this year is even going to make us better. Not to go faster, not to slow it down, but to manage that pace in the proper way.
way the rule intends and then let this competition committee look and see is this where we want the game to go and, and what's next? When I go back and I, I look at the eighth official, as our job, we have to predict, uh, which sometimes is a little odd to pick who's going to win the SEC East and the West. But as I look at that eighth official for 2015, I could see more holding calls uh, because there's going to be another set of eyes. Yeah. It's interesting, and, and so I, I don't know if this is statistically valid, but last year, uh, we, you know, we have nine crews in the SEC. We took one crew, and they worked the full season a, as a crew of eight. And, and I made sure from a scheduling that every coach got to see them. So we put them, you know, where every coach saw them. We got good feedback from the coaches. Um, but what was interesting is when you look at fouls per game, they were dead in the middle. There were four crews that had more fouls per game, uh, four crews that had less less fouls per game, dead in the middle. Um, you know, one of the things you, you look at is now, you know, our guys are preventive officials and, and you have a presence there. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see where we go this year. We are going to get better looks, uh, but, you know, what we've seen so far is not, you know, a proliferation of flags just because we're adding an eighth official, but managing the game, the tempo, the substitution process and even you know as the game changes now you know we have plays where we have five receivers in the route where we have three deep officials and two wing they all have keys if you got five receivers out all five of those guys are occupied and then we had the umpire and referee to kind of handle everything else now we get a triangular look in there as a center judge and I think it'll help us manage that so yeah you know we we could get more holding calls but if we have better eyes on them you know then the coaches are going to say hey you, you can't hold anymore and uh, so we're, it'll be interesting to see where we go with that. Steve Shaw right now, the director of officials for the Southeastern Conference, visiting with us here inside the game at Tuscaloosa on Tide 99-1. Another part of the conversation throughout this offseason, we put it in front of the Rules Committee. They voted it down, ineligible linemen downfield. Uh, do you think you guys are going to be more – uh, observing of that. Do you think that's something that to m next week when you talked about getting together with your officials, will that be something that you guys try to emphasize? Well, it'll be something, I mean, the requirement will be we'll officiate it within the rule. And and so, you know, a lot of people, even though I know there's been a lot of talk about it, you really kind of step back and talk about what's in the rule. So the, the rule as it's written today, an offensive lineman can go downfield up to three yards, but it's not during the pass. It's, it, it's a snapshot in time when the pass pass is released. So, you know, we, you have to snapshot that. And that's the hard thing from an officiating standpoint because typically it's the umpire, the guy that's kind of on the defensive side of the ball making this call, and, and he recognizes the pass when it's overhead. Well, if you get a free release lineman, he may have only been three and a quarter yards when that ball's released, but by the time that ball gets overhead and he recognizes he's five yards downfield. Well, technically that's not a foul, but to the umpire it looks like a foul. So, so we're going to work hard on making sure that we can officiate it within the rule. Um, and and then that's another area where I think this uh, competition committee, you know, they can look at the rule. Is it serving the purpose? Do they need to make a change? You know, the rules committee uh, actually made a change to it, but the playing rules oversight panel prop kind of overturned it and said, hey, let's just table it. Let's let this competition committee look at it. So, um, you know, we'll focus on it and we'll talk about it and, and, and we'll get better at officiating that type play. Is it fair to say the targeting rule from two years ago was implemented? Not saying incorrectly, but looking at the rule, we made the adjustment last year. It seemed to work better. It seemed like the fans were much more happier with that rule if it's overturned than any way. Do, do you think it was implemented two years ago incorrectly? Well, so so this thing has been a journey, okay? And part of the journey was to change player behavior because our game was at risk. Uh, I mean, these high hits, we had to get out of the game. I mean, we even had the president of the United States say, you know, if I had a son, I'm not sure I'd let him play football. We, we may laugh that off, but those are impactful words. And so it was clear there was a mandate. We had to clean our game up. So um, we have made significant strides in changing player behavior. You know, that pass, the receivers going across the middle, you know, used to be if that's overthrown, that free safety, he was going to leave a calling card. Now you're seeing them lower their target and many times pull up from an unnecessary hit. So I think that we probably were too tight in the beginning. You know, the first year where even if it was overturned, we were still walking off the penalty. That didn't make sense. 
sense. And we made that adjustment last year. And, and I think everybody kind of liked it. Targeting fouls were down. We did the numbers a little over 10% down last year. So people have asked, so are y'all going to let up on targeting? Absolutely not. That's a component that we need to continue to work to drive out of the game, changing player behavior. So the rule is really working well. The, the targeting fouls are down. We've got to stay on it and, and make sure it's a safer game. And I heard fans two years ago say, oh, this is ruining the game. This is a horrible game. You know, I would tell you the last two years have been about as exciting for college football as I can ever imagine. I can't imagine it. You know, it, it was certainly not ruined. And, and so I, I think once we implemented it and once we got better last year at it, uh, you know, now it's part of our fabric and the players know and they want to avoid those type hits and it's the right thing to do in our game and it hadn't ruined anything. I mean, if any, I mean, our game is as popular as I can ever imagine. Oh, no doubt. I mean, look at the SEC media row as far as Absolutely. Uh, the, the popularity <laughs> of the sport is, is no doubt and we continue to, hopefully that continues to grow. I mean, we would love to be able to challenge. You may never surpass the NFL, but the popularity of the game, uh, we could get close and uh, hopefully college football is able to do that. Steve Shaw, final question. I want to paint a scenario. Let's go to the goal line. Uh, you've got an offensive guy, offensive line, uh, misses a block, which it's a running play. We've all seen the plays where the offensive running back gets to the line, of uh, almost to the goal line, but you, then you see an offensive lineman miss the block, and they get on the shoulder pads and push the young man forward, uh, a running back, or, or maybe even a quarterback, uh, the guy that's got the football. Is that illegal? So, so this, and many people call it the Reggie Bush rule, but uh, it, it used to be. But the rule was really changed now. You know, if they're pushing, driving the pile, that's not a foul. What we're looking for for aiding the runner in those situations, if, if, a, if a runner is stopped and a, a lineman reaches out and grabs him by the shoulder pad and kind of yanks him forward into the end zone, then that's a foul. But if, if they just get behind him and, and just drive or, you know, it's a quarterback sneak and that the tailback comes and just kind of plows into the back and just drives him forward, um, now by rule that is not a foul. And, you know, we really never called it that way anyway, but, but the rule kind of caught up with the way we officiate it. So we're really looking for when that guy reaches out, grabs him, pulls him, does something unnatural. But if he's just driving him or the pile, then that's by rule a legal play, and they can do it.